across Stone Road, dating back five centuries or more. This is a type of road that was built by the Portuguese in the 1500s. Wow. What is this? Kind of looks like parchment. Ancient documents, possibly linked to the world's most famous playwright. There is a coded map in Shakespeare leading you to Oak Island. A centuries-old construction site. So what is this thing? A British pine tar kiln. Linked to one of the most powerful militaries in history. Could have been used for the construction of the money pit. Wow. And a sacred artifact. Holy shimoli, all right. That's a cross. Potentially belonging to a medieval order of Christian monks. The season 10 premiere of The Curse of Oak Island is just a few short weeks away. That means brothers Rick and Marty Lagina, along with their team, will be back on the hunt for a vast treasure still believed to lie buried deep in the money pit. Come on, be something good. But as they keep digging their way to the silver and gold, they're also zeroing in on just who was behind this incredible 227-year-old mystery. Could it be pirates, European military, or even the Freemasons? The mounting evidence could make a case for all of them and even suggest much more profound possibilities. Number three, Prince Henry Sinclair. Look at that. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah, that is beautiful. Wow. In 2014, Rick, Marty, and members of the team traveled to Scotland, where they visited the 15th century church known as Roslyn Chapel. One of the theories we've heard is that the Mi'kmaq people, the original people in the Nova Scotia area, um, have some symbols that are like some found in here. If you look up here, there is what may appear to be maize, or as we have called it, Indian corn. This chapel was built well before Christopher Columbus went to America. Roslyn Chapel was constructed in 1446 under the order of William Sinclair, the grandson of Templar Knight Henry Sinclair. Throughout the building, and especially the ceiling, Hundreds of carved symbols are featured depicting the legacy of the Templar order, curious faces known as green men, and a number of plants such as corn and trillium, items that were native to North America. So how did William Sinclair know of their existence and choose to feature them in his sacred chapel? We're particularly interested in North American influence in the chapel, and that's simply because we've come looking for a connection to Oak Island in North America. The legend here is that Prince Henry St. Clair in 1398 sailed to the New World and brought back with him corn. According to some researchers, as well as members of the indigenous Mi'kmaq people of Nova Scotia, in 1398, the Scottish Templar Knight Prince Henry Sinclair arrived with a fleet of large sailing vessels. The two groups are believed to have forged a peaceful alliance. In fact, today, the ceremonial Mi'kmaq flag is a mirror image of the traditional Templar battle flag. However, some researchers insist that Henry Sinclair's chief mission was not merely to explore a new land, but to bring priceless Templar treasures to Oak Island, which he secured in the money pit. If Prince Henry Sinclair really did hide Templar treasures on Oak Island, was he the one that created the money pit? Or did he simply know how to access it so he could add to a previously established vault? Well, coming up, that's exactly what some believe the next group of top suspects on our countdown did. Number two, the Knight's Baronet. Well, I found the treasure listed in five ancient books, and I have uh, an account of it here. It could literally be a half a billion dollars. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah. Over the past four years, author and researcher James McQuiston has made several presentations regarding his theory of who was responsible for at least part of the treasure believed to be buried in the money pit. 
So here's the theory in a nutshell. The followers of a group of Scottish knights created by William Alexander settled in Nova Scotia during the early 1600s. And this is historic fact. They were the Freemasons. In 1625, Sir William Alexander, who served as the Scottish royal advisor to King James I of England, founded the Scottish order of the Knights Baronet. Many of them were Freemasons, as well as direct descendants of the Knights Templar. Their mission was to begin a settlement in Canada, and its name would be Nova Scotia, or New Scotland. They were successful for a number of years and according to James's research, even settled in New Ross, just 20 miles north of Oak Island. However, in 1632, they were forced to flee when France conquered the region. Unfortunately, the French attacked Nova Scotia, leaving the Scots ousted in the spring of 1632 and unable to sail directly across the North Atlantic back to Great Britain due to the bad spring weather. And I believe they took shelter in Mahone Bay, which would have been the best place to take shelter, and buried what they couldn't take back with them. It was James's theory that members of the Knights Baronet may have known of an existing Templar vault on Oak Island and went there to hide their valuables. In fact, that knowledge may have inspired the entire mission to establish Scottish settlements in Nova Scotia to begin with. You know, th theorists have come and gone here. What separates the real theories as it applies to real search, generally those theories have to connect the dots. James has come, he connects one fact with another fact. Now, some of them are an interpretation of known facts, but, but the dots are pretty close together, and I, and I am thoroughly impressed. And nothing helps to connect dots more than corroborating finds. Oh, wow. Rick, check this out. What have you got, Gary? That's unusual. Came out of that last bucket. It's one piece of wood. Yeah, that is strange. The object appeared to be a mason's T-square, or straight edge tool. But from what era? OK, um, I'm going to look at the wood mason's tool. This one was from. 1632 to 1668. <laughs> Whoa. Carbon dating revealed that the early date on the T-square was 1632, the exact year that James McQuiston believes the Knights Baronet visited Oak Island. Number one, the Portuguese Order of Christ. This stone road doesn't fit with the road building that we're used to seeing from the French or the British during the colonial period in Nova Scotia. Wow. So to me, it would speak to the 1500s or earlier. People that came here from Europe were used to building roads that way. The Portuguese were active in Nova Scotia in the 1500s. In 2020, the fellowship uncovered a massive cobblestone road in the swamp that appeared to be the remains of a possible Portuguese ship's wharf, one designed for unloading heavy cargo. Look at the shape of that. Whoa, look at that. It's a round shot. Wow. Dang, that is a nice find. But that was only one major piece of potential Portuguese evidence. In recent years, Rick, Marty, Craig, and the team have also found two stone cannonballs, one of which came from deep in the money pit, a metal fragment of an ancient cannon, and a stone path leading away from the swamp. Corian. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome to Portugal. Thank you. These discoveries convinced Rick and members of the team to travel all the way to Portugal in 2021 to see if any dots could be connected back to Oak Island. Wow. Let's see what we can find. That's impressive. Hey, guys, you might be interested in this one over here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I can see it from here. So this symbol is definitely on the 90-foot stone. The circle and the dot in the center of the cross, 
that's one of our symbols on a uh, stone we call the HO stone. At a Templar church, they saw a carving matching one found on the legendary 90-foot stone from the money pit, as well as one symbolizing gold that was found on the infamous HO stone. These hands indicate the aqueduct. A finger drain. There you go. They were shown a water flow system matching the design of the five stone box drains believed to feed seawater into the money pit. Well, look at, look at how beautifully constructed. I mean, rough and raw, but look at the curvature. And a stone road matching the exact design of the one that the team uncovered in the Oak Island Swamp. If there is a Portuguese connection to the construction of the road in the swamp, maybe this is the blueprint. According to documented history, beginning in 1126 AD, the Knights Templar established numerous strongholds in Portugal. And it is also historically verified that after the Templars' persecution in France in the 14th century, many surviving members reestablished the order back in Portugal as the Order of Christ. So, was it Portuguese Templars who were behind the 12th century stone feature found in the swamp, as well as the other main features that were built on Oak Island before the discovery of the money pit in 1795? However, the most compelling clue was in Sintra, Portugal. Wow. Wow, it's deep. What is this dimension, the diameter? 13 feet where Rick and the team were shown a Masonic well, bearing stunning similarities to the money pit itself. It was 13 feet in diameter, it was 90 feet deep, and just like the discovery of the money pit, it featured an oak tree at the surface with a long branch hanging directly overhead. We have certainly made some progress in Portugal. It's about seeking out and finding information and we have made some interesting discoveries. I think we've found an avenue of, of continued search or research. Then you can start connecting the dots between Portugal and Oak Island.